Yes, how does it feel to finally go public with that? Are you relieved? It are you feels excited? really good. Or like you, you want to people say to you like, so what are you working on? You're like, mm -hmm, stuff. <laughs> um, so it, it does feel good to be able to just even tell your friends. You know, I will say the one that doing the mobile game, you know, doing shelter and then not having that leak in any way to finish it completely. Um, you know, everyone in the company was walking around with it on their phones to test it and like, you know, <laughs> oh, we got to get this out and like, you know, to do it and release a game and, and not have anybody know about it. It's really, yeah, really so cool. Someone's like, what are you playing? A t tiny, tiny tower? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's far out, far out Shelby. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, I've always been fascinated by what your team can accomplish. And I think, you know, as you pointed out at the beginning of your presentation, that, that level of detail. I mean, what is sort of the mood of you and all of your team as you're making something as big and massive as a game like Skyrim, but you're also focused on details that are just so small in particular? Well, you know, we want to get transported in a world. So I think there are little details that you want to have um, you know, be there no matter what, that you can touch everything. And we kind of get in these debates as far as what's the gameplay there. But the more you can do that, the more you're suspending their disbelief that they are in this world. So when you do something crazy and have a death claw show up or these other things, um, you believe that as well. So um, we, we do obsess over the detail. And it, it goes back to our previous games and stuff, you know, that I grew up on, like the Ultima games. And I can break bread, I can bake bread and do all of those things. So, um, having it be a believable place is very important to us. Yeah. Um, so it's been a while since the Fallout game. A little while, as we kept getting reminded yes. um, <laughs> by the fans. Um, how has the technology changed in that time? Well, clearly you have the next-gen consoles, um, and the PC can do a lot more now. And for the kind of things that we do, um, it's particularly the memory, actually. So having, having consoles with a lot more memory allows us to do big, dynamic things. Um, and and that's important to us. Yeah. Now, um, in, in, in terms of, of, of Fallout 4, you know, it is Boston. It there, is. There, there's nothing wrong with Boston. In fact, I have to say, one of the most common questions I was seeing on Twitter for me was to find out if every small town in Massachusetts was somehow <laughs> being included in the game. You can but, just mash them all together, right, into one town? We mess with scale <laughs> quite a bit. If you played Fallout 3 and you look at DC, <laughs> you'll see that um, we do change scale up quite a bit to kind of fit that we want to do and change up the landscape. But, but yeah, why we don't like sitting on the 405. I don't want to sit on the exactly. 405 in a video even game. In, even in the apocalypse, <laughs> with all the cars removed, I don't want to do that. But I'm curious, was, was, was there a particular reason that you guys were drawn to Boston? Um, there were a number. I th you know, we did some things in Fallout 3 that, that kind of reference it. Um, and you, know, you look around where you want to place a game, something like Fallout, and the Boston kind of New England area has this, this good vibe of American history, but also like high tech stuff, and so it's it, it, it's a good fit for Fallout. Um, would you like a social media question? Sure. You're like, do I? Bring it on. <laughs> do I? I don't have to answer it. <laughs> but um, they're still going to win that wonderful set of figurines. Oh, yes. Whether or not Todd is willing to answer yes, this I question. I do not get a figurine. <laughs> <gasps> he, uh, sorry, uh, at Chauncey127, I, I think Paul, Todd's going to take your figurine. Um, his question is, if you could choose a perk from Fallout to use in real life, what would you choose? Hmm. Mysterious stranger. <laughs> okay. You would? <laughs> yeah. No, I like that one. Yeah. So Who's that guy? He's my, my <laughs> He's my friend, Mysterious Stranger. I happen to like that perk in the game a lot, too, so that's a, that's a It's tough a good one. one. Um, I was saying I was going through all, like, the Fallout 4 perks in my head, and the ones I like I don't want to reveal yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, not that one, not that one. So it's, 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 we do have a challenging six perks. months ahead of you. <laughs> we'll be talking about that stuff later. Yeah. I mean, we intentionally uh, <laughs> don't cover it here. And it's even in 30 minutes, it's tricky to give people a perspective on everything we're doing because, believe it or not, there is more. I, 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 I I'm can... sure. But something that you did talk about, which I think got a big cheer from the audience, everybody was excited about, was the ability to create a settlement. This is something I'm yep. personally excited about. I know that I'm going to spend my entire time making settlements. How important is that to the game if somebody doesn't want to build? Are they going to they be punished for that? They don't have to. You know, we've always done kind of loose decorating and house building in our previous games where you could you, know, you just buy a pack and someone decorates mm -hmm. it. We notice people taking all of their items and decorating on their own. Um, and when you look at Fallout, doing something like that, just, just it just fits. Um, and so... 
Um, you know, those other games that do that, Minecraft and those kind of things really inspire us. You'll see some of those inspiration on, you know, looking at how people build these really complex machines just in Minecraft with some simple stuff. And we felt that we could do that in a really cool way with the world of Fallout and our, and our tech uh, allowing it. And I, I, th I think it kind of raises the level of where I could do interior decorating, which is sad mattress in the corner and you know, some airplane <laughs> chairs over there. That, that's kind of where my brain is. But, but what really is neat, and if it fits with that and more that you showed, is how everything in the game has this new sense of value. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you get all those objects, and you can break them down, and you can build so many objects out of it. Just from kind of a logistical perspective, I mean, how do you sort of account for how many things that can be made in the game and how many things can be turned into a component that can then be turned into something very you know, fun and useful? Our designers crunch a lot of numbers. Um, <laughs> so we can look at how that breaks down. But there's also this moment like what feels right. Some of that stuff, and you'll see it in the video, is perk gated. Um, but having all of those things have value actually has changed the gameplay in ways we didn't expect. Like usually in our games, people might collect that stuff and it's, it's all for selling. For, that's your main way of getting money. But now you realize, like when we're playing, if you find like, you know, a lamp, that has good stuff, like don't sell the lamp. So you end up... Uh, hoarding, I yeah, believe. You end up hoarding, <laughs> but like, it changes the balance of the game in a very interesting way where you're not immediately, I'm going to take this and sell it, I'm going to take this and sell it, I'm going to take this and sell it, because you're looking at everything saying, I'm going to take this and do I want to sell it? It has a filament in it, and I need that for, oh, what do I? And so it's got a nice, um, it's got a nice tension just in the junk. Does I mean, that make sense? You know, that, that, that's yeah. Do you think that, 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 that as a player, you'll start to develop kind of an interesting taxonomy? That's something that in, in, like in, in, in our present day, yeah. may, okay, I, that's a stupid lamp. But they were like, oh, hold on, that's a lamp. I think I want, maybe if I get four more lamps, I can I'm yeah. go on a lamp quest. <laughs> yeah, there are these, uh, we do have the, it's referenced in three, the Giddy Up Buttercup. It's a, like a play robotic horse. Yeah. And it has tons of screws, which are really important. So whenever you see a Giddy Up Buttercup, like, oh, jackpot <laughs> for screws. I need screws to build this thing I want to build. Um, so we're going to go back to another social media. Uh, this is from at four, number four, all out. That's an awesome. It, it's a play on words yes. and numbers all at the That's same an awesome time. Twitter handle. I like what that. things did Bethesda Game Studios learn from making Skyrim and Fallout 3 that they wanted to change and implement into Fallout 4? Because you, know, you guys are always in an iterative and ever evolving mm -hmm. process. Well, I wouldn't say we're taking a specific feature. One of the things that we do, particularly given the success of Skyrim, you, you get a lot more, we'll call it data, on how people experience an open game. And so we don't ever want to give that up. We'll sacrifice certain things to make it completely open. Um, whereas um, in other games, they'll be open, but you can be, if you're on a quest or something, they'll shut down other things. And um, we're, we, in our game, you can be on every quest at once. Um, so I, I don't want to spoil anything, but one of the things I think that we, we've spent more time on is how does someone experience an open world in doing all these things and how do we tell a really strong story along with that? So that's been something that um, I think we've, we've made a lot of good inroads on that we'll talk about later. Well, and the game is voiced. <laughs> Your character is voiced. Yeah, that is really something cute. that we've not seen in either in Elder Scrolls or Fallout. Was, was that a tough decision to make? Yes and no. I mean, it's one of those things where if you look at stories being told really well in games, a lot of them have a voiced character. So it's like, if you weren't looking at what we did before, you would expect the character to be voiced. Um, and our main, you know, our main kind of uh, anxiety with doing a voice character was finding the right voices. Um, we have two great actors uh, doing the male and the female, and um, they've been fabulous. And also, how much time they had, because we didn't want that to hold back any of our writing. So each of them have spent, they've been recording stuff for the last two years. They've each recorded over 13,000 lines of dialogue. So it's, it's a lot of time in the studio <laughs> for an actor. Um, and it's, it's really come out great and allows us to do some storytelling and emotional moments that we, we, we quite couldn't hit before. Um, we have something fun over here yeah. that I'm going to sneak off, off camera, camera magic. You introduced it. And grab it. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So we just saw a picture of this in the actual showcase, but we get to sit here and play with it. I know, you guys. Yeah. 
it's cool. Now, obviously, that's where your phone would go, and you had to have the second screen experience. Right. I mean, you don't need this. You that's don't need a temporary that. screen right now. Right. Yeah. That's this is a fake little. Imagine. And that's it where does have are. foam inserts, so it has foam inserts to really hold well all the popular uh, smartphones. And, and, they probably and you could probably even make a phone in, an I insert. I think it does come with one where you could, yeah. You it's could fairly easy. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it comes with a little stack of them. Yeah. Um, it really came out great. It does light up too. Like it has. Does that oh, one do? Oh, there is. I know. I, let's see. The power the button. Power button. Yeah. So it, it does have power. That power doesn't do anything to your phone. That's all for touch it. Um, but it does. You know, it lights up. It has a base too. That's cool. So you can set it up. Um, we wanted to make it really wearable. We know our fans like to. Hey, you're gonna wear it when you play the game. Yeah. You know, the cosplay. Um, so it has the, the straps inside. It doesn't. You know. It's. Uh, it's a very wearable smartwatch. No, <laughs> it's the smarter watch. I think that's how I'm going to start regarding it. But I definitely no, it's, liked it's, in the video how you heard the sound of the Pip Boy booting up. I feel like that's the, the sort of that old, old, old hard drive sound. Yeah, and I feel yeah, like yeah. people aren't going to, don't know what that is anymore. And so this comes on sale with the uh, the special edition. I think the, it, we're calling it the Pip Boy edition. Yes. The Pip Boy edition that's going to go on sale for pre-orders in a few days. Is that correct? My understanding is it'll probably be up right away. You know, we wanted to hold yeah. back the announcement right. for yeah. tonight, so. I don't know, it takes a little time for, for retail to prop everything. <laughs> but, but, you we know, don't want to tell them because they always leak it. Yes, so, um, <laughs> you always but, you know, We'd rather website. have a little delay in when you can buy it than hear about it beforehand. But Shelter, that is available, I believe, right now. Yeah, Apple was, you know, they're pressing the button. There. It takes a while for the servers to kind of, you know, roll across the globe. So <laughs> I honestly don't know where to, it depends what server You've you're You've been a little to. busy for the past couple of hours, <laughs> I would Well, have it's say. the first time we've done it, so I don't know. You know, how long does it take to be available where we are? Yeah. You know, is it in a half hour or is it in three hours? I, well, I it really is the cherry on one sort of marvelous Sunday that we've experienced throughout this entire evening. Todd, thank you so, thank so, you guys so, for, so you know much what? for joining us. I have to say, us. it is great seeing you two back doing this. It's been I have fun. really a lot of fond memories yeah. doing the show and, and just having you be a part of this, it's awesome. Well, you know what? You're the guy we would do it for. So I think yeah, it all you. worked out very, very well. All right, guys, that is it from the Bethesda E3 Showcase at the Dolby Theater.